afternoon, everybody, and welcome to St. Barnabas Church. We would like to extend a special welcome back to all our parishioners. Just a few instructions before we begin. There will be no collection during the Mass today in order to minimize contact. As you leave the church, there will be a donation box outside the office. Please drop your envelopes or donations in the box before you exit. We thank you for your support. We ask that if you need to use the washroom, please note that only one person or one family from the same household may use the washroom at the same time. Instructions on how to receive Holy Communion will be given at communion time. We ask that you wear mask at all times during the Mass. If you have any other questions, please find out from our ushers and they will do their best to assist you. Please take this moment to turn off your cell phones and any technology that you may have brought with you in order to prevent any disturbances during the Eucharistic celebration. I am the salvation of the people, says the Lord. Should they cry to me in any distress, I will hear them, and I will be their Lord forever. This Mass is being offered for the intentions of the parishioners of St. Barnabas Parish. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the blessed the ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts, we may merit to attain eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever.
a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord where he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked person forsake their way and the unrighteous person their thoughts. Let that person return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heaven are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. The word of the Lord. the responsorial psalm, the Lord is near to all who call on him. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His, good, his greatness is unsearchable. The Lord is near to all who call on him. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his compassion is over all that he has made. The Lord is near to all who call on him. The Lord is just in all his ways and kind in all his doings. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. The second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, Christ will be exalted now as always in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, living is Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. Open our hearts, O Lord, to listen to the words of your Son. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus spoke this parable to his disciples. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went about, about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he said the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, 
Why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. This weekend, uh, the Archdiocese is celebrating Stewardship Sunday, and the Cardinal will be preaching at every parish in the diocese through video. So we'll be hearing our Chief Shepherd give us a homily for this weekend. person I've always uh, been amazed by in history is Lorenzo de' Medici, the great Italian ruler of the Renaissance. He went down in history as Lorenzo il Magnifico, Lorenzo the Magnificent. Now, wouldn't that be a nice nickname to have down through history, the Magnificent? And he was called this because he was generous in everything he did. He never just simply went for the minimum. He always gave the very best. He didn't just dip his toe into the sea of life, but he dived right in. And so he was known as the Magnificent. Now, an Italian ruler of the Renaissance is perhaps not so important to us in our own life, but I think that spirit of absolute generosity, of abundance, of magnificence, is something that we need to reflect upon in our life in Christ. And in fact, that is basically a reflection of the Lord God himself. Because God does not measure out his mercy and his love to us in little tiny amounts. God always acts with superabundant generosity, with magnificence in the way in which he gives to us the grace in our lives, the blessings with which we are surrounded. We see in that generosity of the Lord God himself a model for us, an invitation for us, a command that we are to go and do likewise. We see this in the reading, the gospel of today's mass. There we have the landowner who hires people to work in his vineyard. And the first are given the fair amount for a day's work. And then he calls others and others and later and later till finally at the 11th hour, just before the day ends, he calls others. And those who are called last, who've only worked about an hour, receive a full day's wage. Now, if you look at things in a kind of a narrow-minded way, you can say and sympathize with the people who were hired at the beginning of the day. What's going on here? Did we not work through the heat of the day? Shouldn't we get more because they got the same amount as we did? But the master says, no, my friend, my friend, can I not be generous with that which is mine? And in fact, what we see as we proceed is from the perspective, not of the anger of the first workers, but of the generosity of the master. We can see that he has decided to show abundant generosity to those who have come last, who did not deserve it. And that's a message. It's partly a message, I think, that the Gentiles who came to salvation history rather late 
are going to receive just as much as those who have been at it for many, many centuries. Perhaps that's part of the message. But it's also a message of the superabundant generosity of God. It's very parallel to what we see in the parable of the prodigal son. When the son returns and the father just swamps him with generosity and loads him with goods and things like that, celebrates abundantly because he has returned. And the angry elder brother says, no, 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 sort of like the first workers in today's parable. How dare you do that? This your son who does not deserve it. The older brother has measured it out. He doesn't deserve it. And yet the father says, this your brother. He was lost and is found. And so we see that magnificence, that generosity from the hand of the heavenly father. And as we appreciate that in our own lives, and we recognize, as Isaiah says in the first reading today, my thoughts are not your thoughts, and your ways are not my ways, says the Lord. We need to go deep into the mystery of divine generosity and to reflect upon it. First of all, we're the receivers of it. We receive so much that we do not deserve. We deserve nothing, not even life itself. And yet God gives us that in superabundance. He gives us the faith, he gives us grace, he gives us everything. He gives us time, the time that we live our life. He gives us everything. And so we receive from the magnificent generosity of the Lord God. But we are also called as his servants, as his creatures, as the disciples of the Lord, to show to others that same spirit of magnificence, that same spirit of generosity in the use of the gifts which we have received. We're not the master. If we were the master, we wouldn't be as generous as the master in today's gospel. No, no, we are servants. We must imitate the generosity of our master. We are stewards. That means we are servants who have been entrusted with the gifts received from the master. And we are called to use them well, to use them fruitfully. As in the parable near the end of the Gospel of Matthew, we see the master hands out various gifts, talents to his servants. And some use them fruitfully with generosity and creativity. And another one just goes and buries it in the ground. Sterile, useless. He does not catch the spirit of the master, the creative spirit. But we are called to be stewards of the mysteries of God, stewards of the gifts of God. They're entrusted to us by our generous master, and he calls us to use them well, generously, creatively, fruitfully. And I think we should think about that, especially on this Sunday, which in our diocese is called, we're calling it Stewardship Sunday. It's a time when we're called to reflect upon that fundamental disposition of the disciple of Jesus to be a grateful steward of the many gifts received from the Lord. And we're all very different. So some receive this gift, some another, some of this talent, some another. We're all very different in that. But we're all the same in that we've received from the hands of the generous master, the magnificently generous master, so many gifts of only we will recognize them in ourselves and recognize them in the people around us. Our whole community is richly blessed with many gifts, and often they go uncelebrated and unrecognized. So through spiritual stewardship, we are called to recognize in others the gifts they have and invite them to bring them forth generously, fruitfully, creatively. And we ourselves are asked to thank God for the gifts that we have received from his hand, more generous even than those of the 11th hour who received a full day's wage for, for working almost nothing we receive even more generously from our gracious Lord. And we're called then, having received these gifts, whatever they may be, to use them fruitfully and to help others, to invite others to do the same. So as a whole community, we are people who recognize that we are stewards of the generous, abundant, magnificent goodness of the Lord. As we do so, here are a few things we should think about. First of all, this disposition of stewardship is not some kind of a program we get into. It's not some kind of a thing we do exactly. It's a profound attitude where we are grateful for what we have received and we are profoundly committed to use these gifts fruitfully, generously, in a magnificence which 
mirrors that of our gracious Lord. Secondly, I think what we need to do as we think about this, as we reflect upon our parish community, how are we, what are the different gifts we can see around us? If we all begin to fruitfully use these gifts, not burying them in the ground or forgetting them or not recognizing them, but drawing them forth from one and all, then our whole community will flourish and grow. And it will also reach out to the people around us who will say, see how these Christians love one another. Look at that community so filled with the gifts of God. We do so also conscious as we reflect upon the parables of the Lord that we need to be creative, not burying our gifts, but let them flourish. And how, let's help others to let them flourish. We need to be as well faithful. These gifts are a gift from God. They're not ours. We need to recognize faithfully that we're not the master. We simply for a brief time in this world are given these gifts and we're called to use them well. And we're accountable as well. The master returns. At the end of the parable of the talents, he returns and says, what have you done with the gifts I entrusted to you? And some used them well, and one did not. He buried it away. So there comes a time at the end of our life when we come before the Lord, and he will ask us, how have you made use of whatever gifts I gave you? And they're all different for each one of us. So let's think about that on this Sunday as we reflect upon the theme of stewardship, which is profoundly biblical, profoundly spiritual. It, it is deeply rooted in our faith. It's at the very heart of the gospel. How can we as disciples generously share with a hint of that magnificence of the Lord God himself? How can we generously share the gifts that he has given to us? How can we make fruitful use of the time which we have in our life, of the particular talents we've received, the material goods that we can share with others, not clinging, but being generous? In that way, we can be faithful and fruitful stewards of the mysteries of God. And we will, in our own life, as God calls us to, reflect the glorious, generous magnificence of the love of God in this world. That's our mission. And if we do that, we will be faithful to it. May the Lord bless us all in this sacred mission to be faithful, creative stewards of the many gifts we've received from our good and gracious, magnificent Lord God.
to share our abundant gifts by supporting the needs of the church in Canada, particularly in the Northwest Territories who need our help. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick, the disabled, the lonely, and the grieving, that they may find consolation in Christ's healing presence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the victims of the September 4th shooting in an Ottawa home, Mistress Chris, Mr. Chris Trainer and his three children, Bradley, Adelaide, and Joseph, for the victims and those affected by the hurricanes and wildfires in the USA, and for our dear sisters and brothers who have faithfully departed, especially Louis Manuel Canea Sr., Malva R. Restin Jr., Pedro Abraham Sr., and Joseph Balthazar. May they experience the fullness of Christ's peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, forgive our smallness of heart and help us to understand your wisdom and charity. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Receive with favor, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what they profess with devotion and faith may be theirs through these heavenly mysteries, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin, by the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. 
Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy, Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may, may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep, and mine know me. Please be seated. Seated. Just a few announcements before the reception of communion. Instructions, I mean. So we will proceed from the back to the front, and ushers will guide each pew. Um, when you reach the front, say amen through your mask. And when you receive the host, make sure your dominant hand is underneath your receiving hand. Receive the host. Take off your mask first. Consume. And then make sure to, to see if there's any particles of the Eucharist in your hand. And if there are, please simply consume them as well. And then put on your mask, and you can return to your pews and pray silently with our Lord. Thank you for your co cooperation. In, in this.
Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life. 
Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Let us pray one Hail Mary for an increase in vocation to the priesthood and religious life. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in this day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Please be seated. Just a few announcements. So starting on October 4th, there will be, there will be an additional Sunday Mass in the afternoon at 1.45 p.m. Second announcement is we're looking for sponsors for the upgrading of our parish media equipment. For example, computer, uh, a laptop, camera, and audio equipment. So if you can uh, help out with that, that would be greatly appreciated. Thirdly, uh, just an announcement on behalf of That Man Is You, T-M-I-Y, which is a men's ministry that the parish is running. And I'm simply just inviting any young men or men in general to, to register for this uh, beautiful group where uh, men grow together in, in Christ and a discovery of authentic uh, masculinity. And Zoom meetings are, uh, Zoom meetings take place every Saturday morning at 7 a.m. I know it's early, but it's also sacrifice. Um, and that's it. So have a great uh, rest of the evening and have a beautiful weekend.